Now, listen carefully and answer questions 1 to 6. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Atlanta Travel Agency. May I help you? I saw your advert in the newspaper this morning and decided to come over for more detailed information about some trips that you currently offer. What kind of trips do you have in mind? Well, I enjoy surfing very much and want to get tanned, but all my friends suggest either mountain climbing or biking. We currently offer all the three types. Even though biking is the most popular type of holiday, it doesn't work for everyone. I think you should follow your heart. Right. What are my options for accommodation, then? For this type of holiday, you can choose to stay in a hotel or a self-catering apartment. Can you introduce the hotel package first? Sure. Price for our hotel package is quite reasonable compared with that of your own reservation. What does the price include? It covers the beachside hotel and free breakfast. Good. Does the hotel have any recreational facilities? Oh, rest assured, the hotel is fully equipped with a pool, a nightclub and a gym. Guests can enjoy a vibrant nightlife during their stay at the hotel. Five-star ratings are common for the hotel's satisfying service. So how much does it cost? Well, it was originally €360 Euros for an adult, but we are now offering a Labour Day promotion. You can get a discount of 12.5%, so that's €315 Euros for now, a really good deal. Right. What about the self-catering apartment? Oh, that'll be even cheaper. But you have to stay in a shared room with other guests. Each room has six bunk beds with lockers. OK. I think the hotel is much better. Getting a good night's sleep is critical for a relaxing holiday. I can't stand sharing a room with someone who snores all night long. Can't agree more. What about the surfing equipment rental? I don't want to bring my own surfboard. You can hire a surfboard by the hour, day or week. Just book it in advance and it will be delivered to the hotel or even directly to the beach. How much does it cost? It costs €15 Euros for a day, but for a week's rental it's just €75. Euros. The surf station also provides surf lessons if you're interested. That's good to know. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 7 to 10. Now listen and answer questions 7 to 10. Oh, there's one more thing you should know. Just in case of an accident during your trip, we recommend each customer to have the correct travel cover in place before leaving home. Please, tell me about it. Well, we mainly offer two types of insurance. The first one is basic coverage. It costs €30. Euros. What does it include? It covers medical treatment during your trip and things like missing your flight, flight delays and cancellations. But, you know, extreme sports can be quite dangerous and therefore injuries during these activities are excluded. Then how about the other one? The second one is called Premier Cover. It is more expensive at €42.50. Euros 50, but we highly recommend this one for regular surfers. If you receive an injury or hurt anyone else while participating in extreme sports like surfing, you are fully covered. I see. I think I'll go with the Premier Cover. When your flight gets in, there will be a minivan to pick you up at the airport and take you to the hotel, but you'll have to get to London Airport yourself. It's all right, I'll just take the airport shuttle. Actually, I personally suggest you take a taxi. It's much cheaper than other types of transport, including the airport shuttle. Thanks for the tip. I think I'll book a trip for next weekend. OK. How would you like to pay? Do you accept credit cards? Yes, we do, but there will be a slight charge on that. If you pay by cheque, there's no extra fee. Great. I'll write you a cheque, then. That is the end of Part 1. You now have one minute to check your answers to Part 1. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 11 to 14. On behalf of our community centre, I'd like to welcome you all here today. My name is Mary Linden. 
As you can see here, this multi-purpose hall is a great venue for various events, including banquets, seminars, or dances. The centre provides services for all ages. As the majority of you have already signed up for our dance workshops, I'll introduce relevant information first before we start the tour and get ourselves oriented. Okay. Now, when participants check in for their first dancing session, they will be given a class list printed with available seasonal classes ranging from zumba to ballet, as well as detailed descriptions and schedules. The dance studio will also give you a complimentary shoe bag to store your dance shoes. Every week will be a surprise in cardio movement. Our fitness professional will guide you through an upbeat, heart-pumping, lively dance class. Therefore. It is highly advised to bring a face towel and a water bottle with you, as things get mixed up easily. You might also want to attach a name tag to your belongings. It will be sent to you by mail in advance. Now, let us get a closer look at our dance workshops and its curriculum. There is a list of activities to participate during and after each session. You'll have the chance to make your own costume, but it won't be held until tomorrow. You can also practice dance with music whenever the studio is available. In the first afternoon and evening of your dance class, there will be an introduction to the development of dance for the past few decades. Then we'll warm up with an informal dance. I know you don't have much experience in dancing, but we'll get there soon. Rest assured, there won't be a dance test until the end of the course. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions fifteen to twenty. Now listen and answer questions fifteen to twenty. Okay. Now a word about the layout of the centre. Our beautiful facility has twenty-five rooms altogether, which are both very functional and aesthetically pleasing. We are standing here, right at the entrance. To your left, you can see two rooms in a row. After each dance session, you're probably soaking in sweat and in desperate need of a shower. Just go straight ahead, turn left, and the shower room is on your left-hand side. If you just want to take a nap, there is a six-bed bunk room. It's immediately to the left of where you are standing, right before the shower room. We also have a games room with dart boards, table tennis, pool, and card games. It is a good place to have fun with friends. Just take the first right. It is the second area to your right. You can explore it well later during our tour. Further ahead, in the corner, there are the bike racks. You can either park your bike here or hire one if you want to ride. The first hour is free. Part of our dance sessions will take place in the music room. It has a large mirror with various musical instruments and state-of-the-art stereos. If you want to get there, just go straight, take the second right, and it's the second area to your left. Our friendly reception team is an invaluable resource for any visitor to the centre. If your mobile phone needs charging, we have several adapters and can easily get your phone back up and running again. We also offer a range of chargeable services, including photocopy, scanning, and faxing. The reception is located in the centre, to the south of the music room. There is a medical centre providing a full spectrum of care and treatment, especially for sports injuries like a sprained knee. It's right opposite the reception, to the left of the music room. Now I have to tell you about our gym, where some of our dance sessions take place. It is also equipped with the latest equipment, including exercise bikes, treadmills, rowing machines, etc. If you walk straight ahead before you come to the end and turn right, it's the second room to your left. And speaking of food, if you ever feel hungry, you can either cook in the kitchen or grab a snack at the store. To reach it, keep straight on until you get to the third passageway. Turn right, and it's the one after the gym. 
and the kitchen sits right next to the gym on the same side of the passageway. It has all the utensils you'll need: spatulas, frying pans, ladles, and plates. You name it. Just feel free to use it. By the way, if you have coats, umbrellas, or any large bags with you, the cloakroom is available. It's the room in the top right corner on the far side. Right. Well, if you're ready, we'll start the tour of our lovely community center. That is the end of part two. You now have thirty seconds to check your answers to part two. Now listen carefully and answer questions twenty-one to twenty-seven. Oh, Karen, hi. Come in. Take a seat. I wanted to talk to you about this assignment you've handed in. I'll give it back to you with detailed feedback. But first, there are a few things I'd like to run over. You know, pointers for next time. When you hand in your next assignment, can you ensure that you've gone through these aspects? Um, sure, we'll do. Now, the first thing is your literature review. It was not sufficient enough, so I would like to see your book reports to get your complete view. So, can you submit those with your next assignment? Then I can find out which parts you've chosen to leave out. Oh yes, sorry, I didn't realise you needed them. It did cross my mind that what I've handed in is a bit thin, but then I started to work on another project and forgot to revise it. That's all right, and I've found some errors, just small ones, where you had quoted people but not recorded the information properly at the end. Don't forget to go through and make sure that your references are accurate. They were very relevant, though. Just check and revise them using the format sample that I've emailed you beforehand. Okay? Yes, I'll remember to check them. Now you've made some good points, but it might be helpful if you could include a few other examples just to drive your point home. Don't start writing more paragraphs. Just slot them in at the end of what you've already written. Now the thing you have to do if you really want to get a better mark is expand the ideas you're presenting. Then your argument becomes more valid. Okay. Hmm. Can I talk to you about the presentation I've got to do? Sure. Of course. When shall I stage what we've studied? Am I doing it next term? I can't remember what we said. Well, the thing is, Marco couldn't do it, so you agreed to do it at the next seminar. So how can I help? Um. Actually, I'm wondering what you suggest to be the key part of the presentation. I mean, which part should I spend most of my time on? That's a question to the point. Well, you have very little time, really, so it's absolutely essential for you to explain the experiment. Of course, you'll have a summary in the handouts you give out, but you can still start the presentation with that. It's optional, though. And do I have to give you the abstract first, or shall I just email it to all the students? Uh, no. I do need to see it first and see if it needs to be polished up, and then we'll get some printouts done. Now they'll need to be done by the third of December, so I'll need to see it by the twenty-sixth of November, if that's okay. Yes, fine. Oh, and I need to talk to you about where the presentation is going to be made. Given the actual number of participants and audience, we've had problems with the rooms because we'll need something bigger than usual. In our faculty, the only room available is the computer room, which is far from suitable considering the layout of the room. So we'll have to go across the road and do it in the chemistry lab. It's big enough to accommodate everyone and is equipped with the proper overhead projector in there as well. Okay, right. And I get a grade for this, don't I? Yes, your first one was graded by your tutor, but this one will be scored by the professor. But relax, the criteria will be consistent, and you'll get an unbiased result. Before you hear the rest of the discussion, you have some time to look at questions twenty-eight to thirty. Now listen and answer questions twenty-eight to thirty. Oh, and I've sorted out my modules for next year. You asked me to tell you about my choices. Yes. What have you decided? Oh, it was really hard to determine. Um, I've already done the data collection once, so that wasn't really a choice. I couldn't make up my mind between language and society and communication skills. I read the syllabuses, but they sound more or less the same to me. Anyway, I went for communication skills in the end because I know the lecturer. Actually, social interaction seems to cover much the same ground, so I didn't bother with that either. 
Um, I thought discourse analysis looked really interesting. It studies and analyzes the text beyond the literal meaning of the sentences. It looks into the connotation beyond the sentences. And in fact, it also covers a little bit of research methodology in it. So I thought I'd do that rather than the full methodology course. Kill two birds with one stone, as it were. And then I fancied something drastically different. So I thought psycholinguistics would be interesting, unless you think it'll be more worthwhile for me to do the phonology course. No, I think you've made sensible choices. I'm glad you're organised. OK, let's meet again in a couple of weeks to see how you're getting on. OK, thank you. See you then. That is the end of part three. You now have 30 seconds to check your answers to part three. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. Good afternoon. This is the third session of the series of lectures on wildlife. For this lecture, we're going to look at two studies on the habitats of birds and protection measures taken in Australia, including the basic methodology and related areas of research. Now, let me give you some background information about the first research project on birds. The study was carried out by R. B. Cunningham and his team from the Australian National University in 1995. The primary goal was to detect the breeding habits and resting sites of some birds, especially those protected species in urban regions. These species included birds like peregrine falcons and kestrels in Australia. The bird data set consisted of a total of 153 species recorded from 946 sites, one might expect that in order to obtain valid data on their distribution patterns and population densities, researchers had to count through binoculars. Instead, they managed to estimate with various standard distance sampling methods like random sampling. In addition, a mapping system was used to study their companionship behaviour. It recorded proposed birds' nesting sites to monitor the mating behaviour of targeted species. To obtain valid data of birds' whereabouts, researchers attached identity tags to birds' legs, transmitting radio signals. The tagging process was done when the birds were between five and seven days of age. After the initial tagging, data was collected from subsets of radio-tagged birds, making it possible to assess the trends of birds over 15 months. So, what did they find? Well, as it turned out, Many of the birds tagged had the tendency to nest in the same habitat where they grew up. Their nesting sites were quite varied and included freshwater reed beds, tidal reed beds, agricultural crops and man-made sites. Even though naturally occurring nests were common, birds sometimes accidentally nested in man-made devices like power towers, chimneys and tunnels. This research also studied the impact of humans on bird communities and found out that pollution had contributed greatly to the declining birth rates of some species, which were considered to be extinct or threatened to vanish from the study area. These species are dependent on natural forests because of their breeding holes. They will become extinct when local natural forests continue to be polluted heavily. A number of measures were thus taken by members from local animal conservation organisations to boost their alarming survival rates. Firstly, breeding boxes were placed in trees, taking on the role of breeding holes that were contaminated. Protection guidelines were also introduced strictly prohibiting killing, disturbance and habitat destruction. A further measure was taken to ensure the safety of birds from wind farms. In fact, birds are sometimes shedded by wind turbine blades. A great deal of work was done on how to prevent them from colliding with turbines. A case in point was protecting space for bird migration by ensuring that migratory routes were kept free. Falcons generally cope well with wind turbines, but not in weather conditions where visibility is bad. So, with knowledge of how fast falcons fly, bird stations in northern Australia can notify wind farms further south of the falcon's approach so that turbines can be shut down as they pass by. Then, another piece of research was done a couple of years later by Conway in 2006. 
His team detected the calling frequency of seabirds flying at night. Acoustic signals are important communication tools for birds. These signals can indicate social cohesion, prey location, and breeding behavior. Courtship songs are common among various species during mating seasons. Males produce calling songs that attract distant females, and then courtship songs will induce nearby females to respond. Surveyors also took recordings of the sounds of all the individual birds detected. A tablet PC was used to process detailed information like sound pitch, spectrum, length, and timing of surveys. To minimize the disturbance on the bird community, all the sounds were recorded from a distance using microphones to detect noise. They found that the probability of call events was much higher for solitary birds communicating early and late in the day. Further analyses indicated that during foraging, the frequency of calls was significantly greater for birds encountering schooling fish, and birds called sooner after a catch in these foraging scenarios compared with when only single fish were encountered. The results of this study showed that increased calling activity in the presence of more profitable prey could be of crucial importance to seabirds that benefit from group foraging. So. Does anyone have more questions on? That is the end of part four. You now have one minute to check your answers to part four.